this video I want to talk about the benefits of joining the US military now the past couple of months I've been having a bit of a midlife crisis and have really been kind of I really put that really right on my brain and really trying to put that a lot my focus so I've been doing a whole lot of study and I've kind of binge watched a couple of different uh, popular Navy YouTube guys but this is more about general military so a lot of the ones I want to give them credit to where they are so I've watched Austin Alexander, JT Suits, Nikki MGTV so I got a lot of info from those guys and also some other info I just kind of looked up on my own a couple of Facebook groups here and there but stay tuned to the end because some of these you may not know right some of them are going to be very popular a lot of people think it's just a uh, steady guaranteed paycheck but there are plenty of other benefits so let's jump right on to it I've got a list here I'm going to be kind of looking down on and checking things off as I go through so one uh, 30 days per year of vacation okay this is a big deal because it's hard to think of any employers where you're going to get 30 days vacation per year and I believe the way that it works is that you're accruing 2.5 days per month and they can all roll and bank all the way up to 60 days once you hit 60 days it no longer start, starts accruing okay so take advantage of that that's a big benefit in today's job market another one probably most people would know about would be the health care so military members so active duty you get TRICARE that's the one where they pay for everything if you just happen to go into some kind of military reserve program there's TRICARE reserve so with that one you'll be paying a little bit out of pocket per month whereas the other one if you're active duty everything's taken care of so big benefit there to where it, it's just all taken it's done for you taken care of where a lot of employers you may have to go pay you know a hundred dollars 250 per month and you get to choose between you know, all these different kind of plans right so that's a big benefit there especially once you're getting older in age middle age a little bit older you know we have issues with bodies and they get pretty costly especially dental work or things you have with uh, hips uh, different kind of uh, joints things such as that so then there is the housing this one pretty much everybody knows about you have the military bases I'm kind of focusing personally myself on the Navy okay besides that it makes no difference whatever branch you choose the military will always guarantee you a place to sleep at night it may not be a very comfortable place but they will guarantee you a place to sleep I can guarantee you that so where they have I know the Air Force they have a lot more uh, the most uh, fine luxurious of all the branches the accommodations I, no idea about Space Force I don't even know if they have um, their own barracks and bases and all that who knows because they're just so new but no um, Navy it's a little bit nicer now kind of a, a cheat code to where it forces you to be very frugal when you're just getting in lower rank is just live on a ship right if you go live in a barracks with someone and you have this kitchen space and all these drawers and things like that oh well I can go buy this appliance I can go that buy uh, that appliance or whatever it is I can buy, go buy this and now you start accumulating all these objects if you just live on a ship there's limited space and your stuff has to be locked up constantly if they go by and inspect your area and things aren't locked up you're in trouble so that's what I like about the Navy it, this, this forced frugality because of limited space tight confined living quarters you're, you're gonna be frugal right now don't get me wrong if you're a little bit I mean like in your 20s 30s you already got some kind of things and you don't want to have in 
family stored up and you're, and you're single, you can go rent a storage unit for like $100 a month or less and just put them there, right? Whenever you get up to E5 status and you want to live off the base with your BAH, which I'll talk about that a little bit later, or if you're going to be using the, the VA home loan, I'll talk about that a little bit later, then you can go take all that stuff out of there and then put it into your own spot. Now, I'll submit uh, BAH, a lot of people don't know about this, so is that BAH, they're going to basically last for housing, they're going to give you a cost. For example, let's say there is not enough housing, whatever branch you're in, or the barracks or wherever it is, military housing, there's not enough space. You have the option once you get to, oh, wait, wait, scratch that. You may have the option at whatever rank to take the BAH and just live off base. They'll just cut you a check. The amount is different per zip code, okay? So let's say like you're in like coastal California, Hawaii, the DC area. The BAH is going to be a lot just because the cost of living is very expensive there, right? So you can go do the roommate situation with somebody off base who's running out a, a room or a, a granny flat, whatever it is on their own property. And kind of a cheat code too is, let's say for example, the BH is $2,000 for wherever it is. You go find a place that's 1,500, you can just pocket the other, the other 500, right? So it's, like I said, so no other job, you're gonna be getting this. They're not gonna provide you housing, okay? Let's move on to, okay, this one I bet a lot of people don't know about. So I'm gonna throw this one now, is the, there's a certain uh, law, I believe federal law to where your consumer uh, borrowing consumer debt is capped at 6% APR. So for example, like credit cards, auto loans, things such as that, all of that. So th there is a process to get that. You have to have like official letterhead, for whatever branch you're in with your name rank, uh, when you began, how long you're going to be, and then when you're exiting active duty. It's only for active duty. Okay. You submit that to whoever, like Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, or it could be like an for auto loan. And then they will then set the max rate at 6% as opposed to like, it was like a uh, credit card from a department store or whatever, anything else, like the typical 29.99 APR, right? That's a big benefit. Once again, what other employer is going to go and give you that benefit? It's so many benefits with in the military. Now I'll go back to, I'll jump back to housing now. So a lot of people do know this one is about the, the home loans you're able to get. Okay. Based on the research that I've done, after two years of active duty service, or if you're in the reserves, after six years of active duty, you'll be able to qualify for the VA home loan. What this does is it allows you to uh, be able to purchase the home and the VA will, in that case, they're going to put down 20%, which eliminates the whole private mortgage insurance, okay? This really makes it able to it, it makes it able to where you can take, for example, you would have all this thousands of dollars, you would be taking that for closing costs and the down payment. Now all you have to worry about are the closing costs, right? Because the down payment's taken care of, and it just makes it so much more affordable. So a big benefit there are the VA home loans. And then I will go to now, this one a lot of people may know about this, is the food. So it's, it's kind of a common sense one, but then uh, the other aspect I'll talk about that too is the, the food you get. So if you're lower ranks, you're living on the base, maybe like if you're E5 or below, 
then you're able to go and just, if, you're, if your schedule allows it, you can go and eat at, for example, in the Navy, they call it the galley, right? You're able to go and just eat there, no charge. Now, the other thing is if you have a kind of a complicated schedule or you just don't want to eat there, they have what's called uh, base, BAS, Basic Allowance for Subsistence. And it's a few hundred dollars to where you'll be able to go and buy groceries. They put that amount on your paycheck. And you'll be able to go and buy, let's see, like if you want to, you're just really want to cook your own food and you're living off base anyways, so they'll give you that and you're able to go and just at your own leisure, go in and make your own food and, and do it that way, right? Now let's go to, ah, travel. So I've heard several people throughout the kind of research I've been doing to where, let's say they were stationed in a certain country, but they were near all these other countries. So on their days off, they were able to just go and just explore around the other countries. And I believe one of the person that can't remember exactly, I believe he was in stationed in Germany and he just took a day off and then he went to France, just went out and just explored. He took a couple of days of leave. So military really puts you, so coming from an American point of view where almost all jobs, I can't really think of any to where a typical jobs going to be having you travel for work, right? You just go there to the office, do your thing, and then go out and then leave for the day. So with military, a lot of times th there is travel. No, definitely I've heard some people with the Air Force, they're traveling a bit here and there. Potentially when you, people are going to get higher up in ranks. A big one, kind of like what, why I like the Navy, is that if you're going to be out on deployment and every couple of weeks you're going to be pulling into a port and so there's the four or five days in port, well you get one or two days off because they have to do a rotation for the whole ship. So you get potentially one or two days to get off the ship and go explore and try a new country, culture, city and all that. So let's say like I know a popular one would be Spain, Japan, Malaysia, Thailand, all these other countries. I mean, if you did that on your own, you would be taking vacation time from your work. You get to buy the plane ticket. You take all this time to research, make the arrangements, and then you have the, well, you're going to be paying for your food and all that drink when you're on the, but let's see what else. That's pretty much it. I mean, they're taking care of getting you there. Now you can go on your own and have time to just go out and explore. So another big benefit once again. And then... And then the job training, I'll talk about that. So now job training is a big deal because the uh, it's really going more a little bit more tech based, and a lot of people are needing those skills. So pretty much every branch has, I would say, really good. I would say Air Force is a little bit better. I'll talk about that in a different one in a second here. So they're going to go and train you. So after you do basic training for whichever branch, then you go and do your training for whatever job you're doing. And a lot of them, it could be something that's going to be very profitable once you get out of the military. And that's a big thing I want people to keep thinking about too, is you're not in the military forever, right? Four years, six years, whatever it is, however long you want. I know Austin Alexander, he got out a couple years back and I'm not sure what he's doing, but he's doing something different. And then Nikki MGTV, he's, he's still in. He's talking about he's going to spend being for quite a while. And then uh, JT Suits, he got out. He's doing his own thing now. He's, uh, the last I heard, he's in college. Job training, big thing. They're just giving it to you. as what It's for your job, for your work, your role in the military. So it could be something related to the trades, HVAC, plumbing, um, could be in medical wise. I know all branches have a medical division. 
uh, tech related, okay? Let's see what, oh, aviation. All these things, once you're gonna go and put that on a resume, once you leave to go in, in the private sector, th this is a big deal. Or even the public sector, you could go out in, for example, in, uh, let's see, like a sheriff's department. If you've done law enforcement in the military, you go for a sheriff's department, police department. If you've done something medical related, you can then go out and do at a local uh, university, hospital, anything like that. So think about how all this stuff just transfers over to the civilian side. And then there's the, a big one is the, the lifelong relationships you're gonna build and in the community. I know I've heard about this quite a bit. I've been living in San Diego for about 20 years and th this is a big deal here. The Navy community is very tight and tight knit community as well as the Marines. We have two different uh, Marine locations here in the area. I guess three if you count um, 29 Palms, which is you know about two hours north uh, east of San Diego here. That's a big deal. I mean, it's very, very tight knit. They, you form lifelong, excuse me, relationships with these people that you surf with. And it's just a tight community, a bond. You form like a whole new family, especially if you're going in the military, out on a ship, you've got, you know, what, aircraft carry, 5,000, 5,500 people there. And it, it's a big difference between how it is when you're in, on the civilian side in a, a, a normal job, right? It, it's completely different. And uh, I mean, a lot of these people who I've known here in San Diego area, they, they're still friends with people who they served with like decades ago in the military. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's just a, a great social network and community that you can have probably for the rest of your life. These people are gonna be there, they may go to your wedding, may go to your birthday, things like that. If they come to town, they'll stop and see you. If you go where they live, they live somewhere else. Uh, they may invite you to stay where they are. So who, who knows? So keep that in mind. And then lastly would be the, the higher education, the college. Pretty much everybody knows about the GI Bill and then the uh, post 9-11 GI Bill, both of those. Another one big benefit too is while you are active duty, you are able to take quite a bit of classes. So I believe for the Navy, I heard like uh, it, it, you have to wait three years and then you can start taking classes, but there are exceptions to that. But the big difference is with the Air Force is that right away, they enroll you into a community college and you start earning community college credits related to what your field is. Hey, so a big benefit there. Uh, once again, <laughs> I can't think of any other employers I could do that. It's just very rare. It, and, and, and a lot of these, once again, it, it's going to be something that makes good money once you leave the military. Think of something in medicine, in uh, tech related aviation repair okay so a lot of these things it, it's it's just they, they just roll out the red carpet for you in a, in a lot of ways for the rest of your life and i know the pay is low a lot of people look at the, the actual the dollar amount paid and they're like oh well that's not a lot but you got to think in a sense about the money that you're saving especially if you're living now on the west coast or the east coast or one of these, these this very ridiculous high cost areas to live in. And I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get out of, of California as it is now because the, the, the expense, and I, th I think now the military is a great way to do that. Okay, I, I may end up coming back later, later some time, but I mean, I would hope it would be a military housing, which I'm not paying for. Well, not indirectly paying for it, of course. All right, so that's all I got for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, please stay tuned. Hit the, hit the bell, subscribe, like, share, comment, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.